Hi, everybody. I'm I'm Ana Diaz. I'm from Mexico City. And uh, well, it was uh, some, I think in, in December, I had a chat. Uh, do you do you listen to me? Uh, yeah. OK, so in December, I had a chat with with Pietro uh, Amodeo, who who Talk me about this group, and uh, well, I, I thought it was that was very interesting to to get in contact with you because uh, because of the material that I've been working with. Uh, I I'm specialist in in what Aztec calendars, and uh, uh, I've I've found some that that arithmetics are something really important for the. For the for all the systems, so I wanted to have contact with people who know some more about arithmetics than me, and and, and to have this comparison. So that's how I am here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so before before beginning, I I want to just to confirm. I have like forty minutes for the chat, and then twenty minutes for for the for the discussion. Okay. So if you agree, we can begin. Uh, let's see. Okay, now you see my. Um, okay. So let's begin. Mm. Uh, so I would like to. Uh, I'm going to to talk. This chat is about the Tonal Powali, which is the system of account of time that I, uh, the, the, that we know as the Aztec calendar. Uh, so, what's going to be this this chat about? By the 16th century, Christian cosmography merged knowledge from different chronographical traditions, most of them based on astro astrological conceptions of time. I want to show that the essential principles that operated in New World's chronological knowledge were not of astrological origin, even when the system permit to count the duration of different astronomical cycles. In contrast, the Tonal Powali seemed to respond to a biological and arithmetical logic that has not been properly discussed and analyzed. What I want to do here is uh, to contrast the data from written in, uh, colonial manuscripts with those pre-Hispanic codices, and I want to show the process by which the complexity of the ancient Nahua account of time, acknowledge that was uh, that regulated different practices, including medical, cosmological, and historical ones. Uh, I want to show how the discount of time was simplified in order to transform the Tonal Powali into a proper calendar, I mean, in terms of the Christian view. This process was necessary to give it compre comprehensibility in terms of Christian epistemology, allowing to find equivalences between measures of time, and most of all, this made possible to make uh, the correlations between the Christian and the Nahua dates. So, uh, I want to give some context about the uh, about what I want to about what I will present in here. I'm an art historian, and so I work with images. And well, as we know, uh, most of the knowledge of the pre-Hispanic past and of most of the uh, ancient uh, cultures, uh, we have access to this past through the written texts. And what I wanted to make in my uh, doctoral dissertation is to compare the graphic, the, the, the written descriptions of the past and the graphic patterns that were uh, depicted in pre-Hispanic codices. And then uh, I wanted to see what remained in the colonial documents and what changed. And this is the base uh, of the work that I've been developing by the, by the last years. So, uh, I'm going to, to talk about this system, which is known as the Aztec calendar, and I want to ask you uh, before before we begin, what do you know? Do you have any any idea, maybe a general idea about the Aztec calendar? I don't I, I don't know if you have. 
Okay, so <laughs> that's good because we can be we can begin from the from the beginning. So uh, uh, let me see. No, I want to use the pointer, but I think it's not. No, we can't see the pointer in this in this screen, and I'm sorry. Well, uh, this is a map uh, made in the 1940s, and around this period. Uh, all the the divisions of the cultural areas of of the of America were were produced in different intellectual circles, and this is one of the most famous uh, works that 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 it's used in 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 Mexico. Uh, there is an area that that is known as Mesoamerica, which includes part of Mexico and Central uh, and Central America. And the, this, the square, the red square is the area where the, the Aztecs uh, were, were settled. Um, I'm, I'm in, the, in this case, we are uh, located between the 14th and the 16th century. 16th centuries of this era. And uh, well, I, I just want to make a correction. I, I will uh, I continue using maybe the, the term Aztec, but Aztec is not, uh, uh, um, it, it's about, it's not really correct. Uh, the people from this part of Mexico, they spoke Nahuatl, and that's why Nahua, it's, it's, it's the best way or, or the best term to identify them, not exactly Aztecs. So, but maybe uh, in, in, in the literature you will find Aztec, so I, I could also use this. So, uh, as I told you, most of the information that we have from the pre-Hispanic pasts come from this text. This is an example. This is a text uh, of Diego de Landa, who explained the, the destruction of most of the pre-Hispanic images. Uh, and uh, most of them, uh, of course, related with gods and with with the, which were identified as as deviations of the religion of devils and so forth. And this image is important because the codices that registered the the account of time were especially uh, interesting for the for Christian church because they had a lot of images of devils and of sacrifices and that's why they were also destroyed. So uh, today we have less than eight uh, or maybe less than ten pre-Hispanic codices that register this, this, this account and most of them no, all of them are out out of Mexico. They they remain in Europe uh, in European libraries. That's why we have just a very few documents to use in order to to, ident to, to identify or to reconstruct this this system. So, well, in this image we have two examples of colonial sources. In the left image we have the calendar of Diego Duran. This, this, uh, this was written in the 16th century, by the middle of the 16th century. Nowadays it's in Madrid. And what we see here, it's the, the register of one of the months of the Nahuas. Of the, the, and we see two columns of hieroglyphics. These columns are the days of the Tonalpohuali. Uh, and they are surrounding two images, two iconographical images, which reproduces the scenes of the, the festivities and the things that were arrayed in this in these months. And uh, at, in the, the right image, at the right of the screen, we see a copy of Juan de Tovar, who used uh, well, his his source it's mainly a copy of of the Historia of Diego Duran, but the calendar is it's very different in format. They agree with the text, but the format is different. What we see if in, in this in this page in these pages is that the days are arranged following the the, the Christian calendar, that the, the ten days of the week of the Christian calendar, and. Uh, that's uh, how we can see some differences in in quite in the descriptions of of, of the system. So, well, uh, this is a synthesis of what the chronicles and the Christians of the 16th century identified as the the, the complexity of the Nawa calendar. What we will uh, 
read in the descriptions is that Nahuas has three different accounts. The first one, which is the solar year, uh, this is a period of 18, it's divided in 18 months of 20 days. 18 times 20, it's 360. And so uh, in order to reach the solar year, the Nahuas added five extra days and so they could uh, have the account of, 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 a, of a solar year, a complete solar year. Well, the next account, uh, it's the it's the more uh, well complete account of years. The Nahuas only count 52 years and after 52 years, they began the count again. And these 52 years are the, 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 the more extended version of their uh, period of time. Uh, and, and these 52 years are, are produced by the multiplication of 13 times 4. I will explain how did they reach this account. Uh, this, this 52 years mean 18 1980 days in approximate and uh, they used some hieroglyphics to write these dates and this is very important to know that they only have 52 years because that means that if we find a stella with a date three flint that, uh, that means that this date could we can't identify the exact point of this date in a linear system so we don't know if this is if this date it was uh, something that happened in the 16th century in the 3rd century or 5000 years ago they didn't care about the the location of dates in a complete and uh, in a complete chronological system and the last system that was reported is a tonalpowali the tonalpowali is a strange account which was uh, very problematic for the friars and from for the christians of that period because some of them thought that this this was an astronomical a judiciary astronomical account of time uh, this is this this led us to count just 260 days and that's why some some people thought that it was a strange calendar which had mantic and uh, astrological uh, influences but another Christians, another authors uh, decided that this was not a calendar, this, this was just something, uh, a strange period that was used but that could be displaced from the entire account of, of time because, because this was not natural and because this was not an astronomical account. And the question is that I will focus in this third account in order to identify this as the real uh, axis of all the chronological practice. Well, this this image is the uh, this is an image of the calendar in, uh, written in the Florentine Codex. If you uh, if you know the medieval and the uh, and, and the, cal the medieval calendars and the Christian calendars of the of the 16th century, you will identify this format. Um, what we have in here is the description of one of the months of the Nagua calendars. So this month is named Etzalcoalistli, it's the sixth month of the, of the year. And in the, in the, la, in the, at the left row, we see with, uh, in this uh, blue square, we see the 20 days of the Nagua month. Then in the green squares, we can see the days of the week with the letras dominicales, uh, which let us identify which could be the the, som, the, the Sundays uh, and, and, and all the days in the, in the Christian week. And at the right side, we see in yellow the days of the Christian calendar. What all the descriptions produced in the 16th century tried to make um, synchronization and a comparison between the Nagua calendar and the Christian calendar in order to translate or transform all the dates uh, into the Christian world 
and nowadays this is one of the most uh, I think that uh, most of the uh, advances in the interpretation of the Nawa calendar are, are are based basically in this kind of description of translations. This is an image of how the, the chronicles identified this year. We see at the center of the image is it's a moon because uh, because as I told you, Christian th thought that the, the, there were months and that the months were related with the moon, which is not, which is not right because we, because we don't have exact correlations with the moon or with Venus periods. And uh, we see that uh, from 16th century to 19th century, a lot of devices were produced in order to make these correlations. This is uh, in this wheel. This is not produced by, by an indigenous people, but uh, by, by an intellectual uh, in New Spain in the 18th century. And we see in the center of the image four glyphs that are related with the uh, Nahua years. Then around these years, we see uh, 18 hieroglyphs, which are uh, supposed to be the 18 months of the Nahua year. And then Around this year, uh, around these months, we see again the four glyphs of the years because they are counting the 52 years that made the the great count of years. And so, uh, in this um, in this kind of written sources, we identify that the year was the basic uh, system for counting time, but they have 52 years and that each year was divided into months. Okay, if we contrast this information with the pre-Hispanic uh, manuscripts, we'll find something different. This is a view of a pre-Hispanic codex. It's an open pre-Hispanic codex, codex. And as you can see, we have a lot of dots, colored dots. Those are numbers, but these are numbers related with the calendrical account. And this is very important to, 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 to tell you, maybe we can uh, speak in depth of this in, in, the, in the session of uh, questions, but they had different kind of graphic notation for write, when they wanted to, to write numbers uh, of time, chronological numbers, I mean dates, and they used another different system to write numbers uh, of arithmetics. Uh, that means if they want to count things, they used one kind of graphic register, but if they wanted to count days or um, any temporal uh, uh, unit, they used this, this system. Okay, this image shows uh, what is the tonal powali? And this image shows the tonal powali attached to the pre-Hispanic codex. I can't, uh, I think I can't use, and, and, and I'm really sorry that I can't use the pointer, so I can't show you uh, the, the exact points in this image, so I will speak slowly, but and, and I, yes? Okay, I can't. The problem is that I can't see it in my in, in my in my computer. I don't know why. But well, I, I the, the good point with the Nawas is that this tonal powali has twenty signs. Okay, and these twenty signs are are very easy to identify because they are things. So if you see this image, you will see a deer. This deer, it's, uh, it's the body which has attached different signs of the tonal powali. Uh, the left foot, let's see, the left foot of this deer, in the left foot you will see the face of an alligator, right? Well, this is the first sign of the tonal powali. In the right foot of the deer you will see a mask, a red mask, a red face. Well, this face is the wind. This is the, the face of the wind, the mask of the wind. So the wind is the second sign of the system. In the middle of the image at the lower part, uh, you will see a square, a strange square, uh, red and, 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 and almost red. This is a house. 
The house is the third component of the system. At the right side of this uh, image, you will see a reptile, which is the front of the reptile is green and the lower part is red. This is uh, this reptile is linked with the penis of the of the deer, and then in the other side we see also in the lower part with the tail of the deer is connected a snake, which is the fifth uh, the fifth element. So we can follow the account of twenty different signs that are attached to this deer, and some of these uh, signs. If you see the image, the, the, the deer has the legs open and over the legs, he has a codex, which is this white band that is extended and you can see a school and then uh, comes a deer, a rabbit, water and then a dog. These, these are part also of the, of the, of the 20 signs of the Tonal Pogwali. And what I want to show you here is that they have this connection between the deer the skin of the deer that was the the the, the basic of the basis of the pre-Hispanic codices and the 20 things that are attached to his body. So this is not exactly a book in terms of the literary Christian tradition. It's a connection between the body, between the signs, and I'm going to speak more in depth now here, and about the irradiations that made the, the basic and the essence of this tonal powal. Okay, the image that you see reproduced in this in this uh, in this page is, is this is the page of the Codex Borbonicus. This is not a pre-Hispanic codex. It's it's this codex was made in the 16th century. Uh, one hypothesis is that it was made for in order to explain the the Nahua calendar to to Christianize. But the question is that the painters of this codex used traditional Nahua patterns and imagery in order to show how did this work. So in the middle, in the, in the big part, the biggest scene of this page, you will see a, a person who has uh, this bird costume. This is a god, one important god. And around this, this god, you see different squares, red squares, and on each red square you will see different components, birds, gods, yes, and uh, what the, the most important part in here, I can't follow with my, with my mouse, but if you go to the lower register at your left, you will see one dot, one red dot, and then a blue image. This red dot with this blue image is a date, is the date one water. And this date one water is surrounded by a god that it's embracing it, the date. And so uh, this is the graphic representation of a concept that I will explain now. The tonal powali means account of the tonali. The, the the important part of this word is tona, yes. Now, if we go to the text, tonalamatl is the name of this codex, and tonalamatl means the amate or the tree. Uh, the amate is a tree bark, and this also could be translated of the book of the tonali. Okay, now the tonali is the important part here because tonali it's an irradiation. The name of the son, the, the, the son was called Tonatiu. Tonatiu means the one who comes irradiating, yes? Because when the sun comes to the sky, it, he walks in the sky and he brings us his irradiation, which is that tona. Okay, so the sun has tona, but also the moon has tona and the planets have tona. When the moon is in the full, it's the full moon, and when it's very bright, it's when the moon has the tona and she irradiates us with it. Sometimes Venus, some planets or, or, or the stars could also have tona. But 
this is not an astronomical conception because all the things and all the entities in the world have tona. That means the wind has tona, the clouds have tona, but also the maize has tona and the vegetals have tona, all the plants have tona. For example, when, when the maize is ready to be eaten in the summer, when you when the crop it's ready to be eaten, it is very, it has a strength and it has tona. When the maize is weak, it has no tona. And also the creature, well, all of them are supposed to be living creatures, including, and that means that also the human beings and the animals, we have tona. And we, the humans, have a special, uh, I can say, soul, which is located at the top of the head. In this place, we have our tona, and our tona feeds with a radiation of the sun, the moon, the wind, but this is very important, with a radiation of the tonali that is uh, systematized in the tonal powali and that we receive each day. The tonali will change if each day because it is composed of the influence of different gods as we can see in this image. So that means that each day we will receive a different tona. We will receive the tona in our head and we will accumulate this tona in our blood. When a boy is or, or, a, or a child is born, he will be have a very cold nature and with the time when he accumulates in his body or, or in her body, the tona he or she will be, have more heat because the tona it's an irradiation but it also has a quality a temperature quality which is related with the heat and with the strength okay so that means that the tonali as we see in the in the text the tonali is an irradiation that flows over and around the world and its creature and all the creatures take the tona and condensate it the tonali are, therefore, the irradiations that encompass all the possibilities of existence. And therefore, the tonal powali is a system of knowledge that account and synthesize all the names of the tonali, which are limited to 260. And this is the point. Oh, why 260? Well, uh, this is another image. This is a pre-Hispanic codex. Uh, this is the Borgia codex. And we well as we can see the state the, the, it's it's very damaged the original but in the lower part we have this reconstruction these drawings i want to focus in the left lower uh, quarter of this of this image and we will see a chair and a big uh, human being well this this anthrop no it's not a human being it's an uh, this is an anthropomorphic god this is the 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 sun we know that this is the sun because the necklace it's a solar disk and so here we have Tona Tu who's been who, who's eating he's been fed with the blood and the tonali that comes from this human being a small human being uh, as we can see this flow of Tona comes from his head from the top of his head and so this is an image that shows us that, yes, we as humans receive the radiation of the tonali of the sun, but we also uh, give the tona, uh, we also give this tonali to the sun when, when we make sacrifice. Auto sacrifice, that means when we make some blood, blooding and we offer the blooding to him, or also with uh, human sacrifices when, when, when all this blood uh, was this, this tiny to, to to feed the gods. Now, why 260? And here comes the arithmetics. Um, as I told you, there is not an astronomical uh, exact... Uh, there, it seems that there is not a natural uh, explanation, a natural account, not astronomical, not biological, that can explain why to invent a system of 260 days. If we go to the pre-Hispanic codices, what we see is uh, 
this is a kind of explanation of what was happening. In the center of the image, we see a goddess. She, her name is Tlazolteotl, and she's giving birth to the 20 hieroglyphics, to the 20 signs of the Tonalpo Wali. In the right row, we'll see at the, at the bottom of the page, the alligator, which I told you that was number one. Then comes the wind, number two, house, number three, uh, lizard, number four, number fifth, is snake. In the right side, it, here comes the other number, the other signs. And then uh, if we see this woman is in, in, in the position of giving birth and the last sign that it's being birth, born here, it's a flower, the flower that comes from her genitals. This is the sign number 20. Okay, this is important because each of these signs have a position and therefore they have like a, I don't know if it's a numeric position, but they are not exactly numbers, but they are positions. And so they can be combinated with the numbers, with the calendrical numbers that I told you that were used only in this uh, calendrical accounts. Uh, 206, 260 is the product of the multiplication of 13 times 20. These 20 signs of the tonal Powali are the basic of all the system. And these 20 signs are related with 13 numbers. We don't know the origin of the 13 numbers, why they decided to use 13 numbers. But this system that combines 13 numbers and 20 signs is in use in central Mexico and, and sometimes the Maya used it too. Uh, about 3,000 years before our era. This is the most, this is original of this part of America and, uh, and it's one of the most ancient uh, cultural systems that we will find in this part of the continent. So how do we uh, manage to, to make the account of 260 units or days? Well, imagine that when we combine a number and a sign, we produce a name. The number is uh, we, the first name and the second name. So the first account of the system, the first unit of the system is called one alligator. But as I told you, if we think in positional uh, units, we say we, we can say that this is num one one. The second day is two wind, the third day it's three house, four lizard, and so on. As I told you, each day of the tonali is a personality. It's a specific quality that will change. We have 260 combinations. And now, how do we follow the, the account of this, of this time? When we ar arrive to the number or to the position 13, 13 we uh, begin one cycle, one let's say like a week, one week uh, ends in the number 13, and so the next day will be called one with the position 14, right? This is like the second week of 13 days. And so we will have a combination of 13 and 20, and that's why the uh, and these units of 20 signs was what the Christians interpreted or translated as months. But as you can see, uh, well, it's not exactly the, the same uh, kind of conception of the, of the Christian months or of the lunar, of the, the moons of, of, of months, the months related with the moons. Um, now, the notion that the Tonalpo Wali was, was a different thing that was not used for astronomical account or for the account of the time uh, derives from a bad translation or a bad of a misinterpretation of how does this system work. I will explain in this in this place what was happened. If we have 260 units, we need, as you can see at the bottom of the page, we will need 105 days in order to reach the end of the of the year, right? And so this seems to be a disaster. But not exactly. 
because if we see the first the name of the first day of the first year we have the day one alligator in the in at the left side of the of the page the name the first year begins with day one alligator after 365 days we will arrive to the first day of the second year the day the 366 the name of this day will be two death okay if we follow the account of the the first days of the years in 52 in 13 days in 13 years sorry in 13 years all the days will be changing in a relation of uh, the first day will be called one alligator then the first day of the second year two death then three then four five six seven eight nine ten that means that there is always an order the first day of each year will receive one number the addition of one in uh, in the positions of the numbers and the signs will also have a number you will see that only four signs of the 20 signs will repeat and also in order alligator death monkey bird alligator uh, death monkey bird etc etc et et so if we see in this in this diagram we have the years 1 to 13 will receive the name one rabbit to read three how three flint four house and they will repeat until the the the, the year number 52 which is called at the bottom at the right of this diagram this day is called uh, 13 house so that's how we take the 52 days of this big account that which as you can see are connected with the logic of the tonal powali that's why we only have 52 and now these 20 signs that make the tonal powali they have also not only temporal relations but they are also related with uh, with the space how each sign is related to one of the cardinal regions of the world east north west and south so the number one is going to be related with the east, the wind with the north, house with west, lizard with south, and so forth. So we will have divisions of four, uh, and each day will be connected with a special regional uh, or, or, or location. But we will have also, as, as you remember, when we uh, want to count the days of the year, we will have these four signs that let us count uh, the different uh, the beginning of the year and so these four uh, signs are part of one group of or of one family which are the the year bearers and we will see that each of them will be related with a cardinal region alligator with the east death with the north uh, monkey with west and birth with south that means that when we have an account of time of these 52 years, each year is related with a position. Uh, I only have uh, a couple of minutes, so I will show you in this image. This is an image of the cosmos, and it's this image condenses the notions of space and time of the Nahuas. This image is located in a pre-Hispanic codex, and this shows the division of the cosmos in four cardinal regions. I can't use my pointer, but at the center of the image, you see a square. This square is the center. Around the center, you see the arms of a cross. At the top is the east. Then at your left side is the north. In the bottom is the west. And at your right side, it's the south. Maybe you can identify that the arms of this cross have small dots and also small the, the small signs of this tonal powali, the 20 signs of the tonal powali, which are connected with the perimeter of the space. So 
if we follow this division of the family of the jury bearers, we will see that all the jury bearers of the first family, alligator, death, monkey, and bird, are located in this part, are, are identified with red and are, are located in this part of the diagram. Then the second family, the third family, the signs of the third family, which were used, the Nahuas used this third family to account their years. They didn't use uh, alligator and monkey. They used rabbit, reed, flint, and house. Here are the uh, signs of the fourth family, and here are the, no, the signs of the fifth family. So if we watch the arrange the, of the positions of the numerical uh, divisions of the tonal powali in pre-Hispanic codices, what we will find is that they have this symmetrical arrangement, and it's a very complex uh, logic that we cannot traduce, tra no, translate into the terms of the chronological conceptions of Christian uh, calendar. And that's why this system, the Tonal Powali, was something that was discarded from the Christians, and they also tried to, to, to uh, identify specific points which were really dislocated from the Tonal Powali. Uh, of course, one of the main strategies of the Christians was to, uh, to destroy this, uh, all the ancient practices of the Nahuas, because as you can see, these are related with sacrifice, with death and with the gods. And uh, they tried just to substitute this system with the Christian solar year. Uh, I just will, I have, well, uh, no, I don't have the, the the image that I wanted to show you, but uh, essentially we finish in this image uh, with this. Okay, so now I come back to you and we have time for questions and commentaries. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I have a first question. Uh, yeah. Um, just curious about, since I don't know anything about it, just curious about uh, how you find out this uh, uh, interpretations of uh, this system. What uh, what are the available sources? Uh, how much uh, is actually there to work on and to decipher those things? Yes. Uh, well, as I told you, there's a lot of uh, literature about the uh, about Nahua calendars and Mesoamerican calendars. The question is that most of them are, are based on written texts, and the written texts are descriptions that are located in time and in a specific epistemology, in a specific theology, and in a specific conception of time, which is that conception of 16th century. So what I tried to do is to come back to the images of the of the tonalamatl and to try to identify the visual codes. Uh, it was very hard because I needed, before uh, identifying the order of the images, I needed to to identify the order of the numerics, and I began trying to find astronomical points. Uh, I, I also work with astronomical points because there are some hypotheses about the possible origin of the Tonal Powali. For example, 260 days, it's, it's an amount of period very close to the synodical uh, period of Venus. The point is, it's not exactly. 260 days, it's also linked with uh, the, how do you say, Paso Cenital. The cenital amount of, of uh, I don't know if you know what's this, but it's also very close to, to the Paso Cenital in one specific point in Mesoamerica. And so there are a lot of hypotheses. Ah, something important that I want to, to take here uh, in, this, in this chat, and that it's connected with the medical practices and with the body. 260, it's related also with the period of pregnancy of a woman. That means that if you get pregnant today, it's the day two dog, 
then maybe your son will be born in a day to dog. It's not exactly, but you have this right. And that means that you will accumulate in your body during your uh, uh, pregnancy, these 260 qualities of the tonal powali. So the boy that is born will have uh, experience in the body of the mother this this range of, of of the tonali and that's why uh, there is no consensus of the original and the, and the use of the system and as i told you if we go to the colonial sources they don't identify the origin of the system because i think that it was lost with for a lot of centuries so basically what i am showing here it's a uh, I work with the arrangement of dates and positions and specific units, including gods, including birds, including all these components that are displayed in Hispanic codices. Uh, that doesn't mean that all the information that I showed here, it's new. No, most of this has been also work and there are a lot of, uh, a lot of works that have worked with, for example, with the conception of the body and the souls that are, uh, in the tonali, there are also works that have uh, managed to see uh, well to the the qualities of the gods. Yes, but what I showed here is an integration of these different levels between the arithmetics of the tonal powali. This is the shift. Uh, most of the specialists in Mesoamerican calendar they want to find the astronomical conception because we have this idea that the time is linked essentially to astronomy, but we don't realize that this is one kind of understanding time, but it's not a universal thing. Another important thing that I didn't say here is that the Nahuas, this, this tonal powali has a, an essential uh, logic, but they have no conception of universal time. That means that different people in different places have their own calendar, their, their own account of time. Uh, they could use here the, the, the years the, of the, the signs of the third family of the year bearers, but maybe two towns there, they use another family. And they didn't have to make these connections because the time is not universal, it's linked with the with the geography and with the history, with the local history. And that's also very important to say. To say. So uh, I don't know if, if this answers something. I know this is very different maybe for, for what you've been discussing. And, and sometimes it's, it's marginalized because we, I think in America, we, don't, we didn't have this, this exchange with, with the different traditions of, the, of Asia and, and Europe. Uh, so I'm very uh, happy to be in this for in this forum with you. Thank you. This this was very uh, fascinating, and I've also been, as you were talking, I had been looking at some online uh, images of codices, and I find them very elaborate, and uh, it should have required a good knowledge of the system to draw and, uh, and read uh, this. Excuse me, Sorry. excuse me. Could you please speak slower, because I have echo in the, yes, in the mic. I see. Uh, so... Okay. I see. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Should I even use the microphone? Uh, try, and if yeah. it uh, okay. doesn't echo, then leave it on. Yes, I hear you. Okay, uh, I, I find the, I, I, I saw some images uh, of the codices online and I find them very elaborate and makes me, uh, and, as, and also from uh, what you have uh, taught us about the images, um, it must have required a good knowledge of the system to draw them and also to read them, which leads uh, me to wonder how much do we know uh, who drew them and who read them? Okay, very good question. Um, in 
in Central America, the Nahuas, they, they had a writing system, but this writing system was used exclusively to write dates, to write names, names of people, and names of places, toponyms, but they didn't use it in a narrative. They never use it in a narrative. The narratives were built in drawings, in images, as the one as, that you saw. So they developed a very complex system of imagery from uh, third, maybe 3000 before current era to the 15th, 16th century. So they have this very specialist in painting uh, who were, were the ones who painted the codices, but also painted another kind of, of artifacts. And the painters of the Tonalamatl, which are the codices that I've been showing you, were called Tonalpouke, the counters of the Tonali. This Tonalpouke were the ones who could paint and, and also read the, the Tonalamatl, and they were curers, they were medical people medicine people. Why? Because, because as I told you, the system is biological, so they knew how to interpret and how to manage the system. And this system is linked with medicine, because as I told you, this is an organical thing of flowing of energy. So if you, today you have, you have a flu, and so you go to the doctor and you say, well, I have this terrible flu. Then he will ask you, when did it begin? three days ago. And so the tonal poke manages the dates and he will see, okay, this began in a day three lizard. That means that the tonali is this, so the medicine will be that. You have to go in this day, they have to manage and account which are the propitious days. And they could also make this prognostication based on the qualities of the tonali. Uh, they could therefore make the pronostication of, of uh, health and sickness and health, but they could also make another kind of prognostication like the war. They knew when was a propitious day to, to go to war. And also they could see if there is a propitious uh, marital union, if they uh, make this uh, like arithmetical and symbolic uh, interpretation of your date of your, your name for when you was born and the date of your boyfriend or your girlfriend. If you have, they can see if you have compatibilities or if you really will have a lot of problems because the tonalities are not really uh, good to mix. So they have all this range of activities which were linked with the qualities of the tonality. Okay. Hello. <laughs> um, this uh, presentation was very interesting, actually. Um, uh, while uh, listening this, uh, uh, three things came to my mind. Uh, uh, while following the uh, this uh, temporal notion about this uh, solar year year account of 52 years and uh, tonal power this uh, this three stage of or three uh, uh, set of temporal notion what i found that uh, rather than a linear kind of understanding about time this time is uh, circular in a way, uh, one thing. Uh, uh -huh. Perhaps, uh, uh, I don't know, how this uh, Christian notion of, of time is uh, conceived and practiced. Uh, the, f uh, the second thing I need to know, uh, what was the friction between these two? Even, uh, uh, is it a, a Christian, uh, temporal notion is a linear notion uh, or uh, um, how in this tonal, uh, tonal power valley uh, temporal uh, conception 
uh, this, uh, uh, for example, this in the linear notion of time, uh, past is always uh, a relegated uh, temporal position. Uh, it, uh, this no, uh, it it always uh, the future is always peering to ahead. It's going. Uh, it is a it is a temporal temporal chase always. Uh, but in circular uh, this in a circular notion of time, it is not happening. It is a kind of a past become the present and present become the past. There is a rotation <laughs> happening in there. So uh, how uh, how happened uh, this? Uh, how this kind of uh, notion uh, uh, interrelated in the uh, in this uh, temporal uh, uh, no uh, temporal relations? Can you explain that? Yes, yes, very good questions. Thank you. Uh, well, this is something very important. I, I maybe didn't ha have enough time to, to talk about this, but uh, as I told you, this three different systems of accounting time, this is something not really, not Nawa. This is not the Nawa conception. When the Christians came and made these questions in the, in, the, in the second middle of the 16th century, uh, they began to have interest in the cultural constructions, uh, specifically in the, in the calendrical accounts of the Nawas. That was something very important because, as I, as we can see here, as, as I've, we have discussed here, the Tonal Pogwali was present in all the practices. This is not a conceptual, theoretical thing that it's in the world and only the specialists know. Everybody knew how to count the time. Maybe not anybody ha know how to cure or to make specific uses of the system, but as we do with our calendar, we know in which day we live and we can make these accounts and we think time in our own conception. So the, the Christians were very interested in this system because all the life was linked with the tonal Pogwali. And so they tried to make these descriptions. The point is that, well, in, they didn't have the tools that we have today, of course, we think very different. So they could manage the data in a specific way. And they had this conception that the time, the Christian time is universal and have all these theological conceptions, which are linked with the, with the, with the conception of the unique God, with the conception, yes. Uh, you know, all, all these Aristotelian uh, metaphysics that came through the, through the Christian thought. And so, uh, for Christians, the year was the center of the of the account of time, and the years were used in this linear uh, place, uh, which is uh, it's not something that helps us to account time, but this also has implications, eschatological implications, theological implications. This also explains a, a way of interpreting the past and the future, that kind of things. So, the Nawas used the Tonal Powali as the basis of everything. And I want to make maybe just a, a, a correction or, a, or, or to detail. This is not a circular notion of time. It's a cyclical notion of time. The circle is the year in Christian and in Asia thoughts. Here, uh, the, the image of the, of the the, the last image that I show you, it's more square, it's like a flower, it's divided in modules and it's symmetric. So it's cycle. And yes, this means that uh, the, the time, the conception of time was linked with the conception of space. And it's not just an abstraction because it's linked with your history, with your original history and with your current history with politics, geography, everything was linked. And that's why this can't be a universal conception, because now was, we're aware that each community have their particularities. So these are like local times, even when they have this uh, 
universal arithmetics. But in practice, this was very regional. So I think this is one of the frictions through the Christian time. The second is that, uh, as you see, the Christian needed this very long line of time because they need to, connection for, to connect from the Genesis, the creation, and then the New Testament, and then come Christ, and then the, the Old, the New Testament, and then the history uh, that, that was recorded in, in the Chronicles of, yes, of, of the 16th century, and then you come to the Apocalypse. So you have all this eschatological linear time. That's why you need this, and you need to locate all what happened in this linearity. The 52 years of the of the Nawas had another time of conception. They didn't care when did this happen. Three years, 300, uh, 3,000, 3 million years. The, Na the Mayas also recorded a million years. Of course, those are mythical things, but it doesn't care. The, quest the, 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 the main point here is that the Nawas, for them, there was not importance to locate in a linear time the events but to know the specific qualities of the dates. If this is a day, three lizards in a year, four flint, what is important is the qualities of these two components, because in the past and the future, all the dates related with this influence of the tonali will have some special strength, and that makes that the possibility to repeat or the possibility to make this prognostication and predictions are possible because you focus your interest in the quality of the tonality. I think that was one of the best uh, differences, of the main okay. differences. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anna. I think we are out of time. So uh, let's thank the speaker again.